Good morning, Greater New York Dental Residents. How are you today? I would like to just say thank you for taking the time to attend this course. As mentioned previously, this course is being put on for you and your advancement in knowledge in dental, in the dental industry. We are here at DSG to support you as you grow within the industry. Keep on learning, keep on asking your questions, keep on being engaged. Whatever question you have, please don't hesitate to raise your hand, put it in the chat box, send an email to me. We will get back to you. I will be in the field visiting all your sites um, over the next few weeks. If there's better days for me to come and visit and bring some educational material and have a conversation, please let me know that. We at DSG want to thank you for your continued support, and we're looking forward to continuing to grow together. Without further ado, Dennis Urban. Thank you, Adam, and uh, thank you, Jessica, and good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining us this morning and making us a part of your morning. Uh, today, we're going to do uh, present part two of Back to Basics on Full Dentures, and um, we incorporated a lot of information in the last uh, presentation, and uh, we couldn't fit everything in, so I broke it up into two parts here. So I'm going to go over some of the uh, little review of what we, what we uh, went over last time and presented, but I always try to express and try to get across that going back to basics is how you have successful ventures. You know, from the very start of the case, the back to basics on, on impressions, on bite registrations, uh, even on uh, denture try-ins, and just talking to the patient and communicating the correct way and planning the case correctly. So this is extremely important. Um, for those of you who weren't on last time, my background, I have over 40 years in the dental technology industry. I'm a certified dental technician. Um, I'm the uh, Vice President of Education uh, and Training for uh, DSG. And uh, education is in my blood. And I love to teach and I love to talk about how I've been successful over the years in making dentures because this is what I specialize in. And I've had the uh, opportunity to travel around the world working with clinicians and dental laboratories on these procedures. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about what's made, but what makes a successful denture. So we're going to get started. And I'm just going to, you know, we've come a long way with denture technology. And uh, you can see here on top, this I always start to show this slide. It's George Washington's dentures uh, uh, made of lead and whalebone. Uh, and on the lower part of it, uh, we see these vulcanite dentures, which was a hardened rubber material that was made back in the, uh, in the 50s and 40s and 50s and 60s. And, but we'd come such a long way with materials. So let's go uh, the review of what we talked about uh, uh, last, uh, the last presentation. We spoke about new advancements in uh, denture materials. You know, for years, we've been waiting in, in on, the, on the removable side of technology for new advancements. You know, we had so many advancements on the crown and bridge side and the fixed side, uh, and us uh, denture technicians and uh, those of us in the removable industry were just waiting for more things to happen. So, uh, and uh, so we had, you know, uh, really advancements in our denture base acrylics. And I was proud to be part of this uh, over the years and uh, coming up with different acrylics and testing them out and bringing them to market. Denture teeth also. I had uh, a big part of bringing some denture teeth to the market with the, when I was with Vita. Um, and we have different materials and advancements for hybrid dentures, over dentures, and partial denture materials, which I'll touch on. And I touched on this last time, but I just like to have to do, I'd like to do a little review on what we spoke about last time. So new advancements, denture base acrylics and denture teeth, and we'll get into the digital aspect of it in a little while. But we've come a long way with denture base acrylics. Now, now we have an acrylic, acrylics out there that are high impact, resistant with flexural strength that look natural and that they don't look like dentures. You know, they, we can match the natural gingiva of a patient. As you can see here, high end denture teeth, high end acrylics to make it look aesthetic and it's functional and the longevity, uh, longevity of these cases and denture cases uh, really surpass what they what we had over the years. So, this is a full upper, full lower denture with physio dense denture teeth from Vita. Look how beautiful that denture is with denture based staining. We mimic natural dentition and, and, and mimic natural gingiva on these cases. And even with denture wax ups, we have they have special waxes out there now. We can mimic the natural gingiva of a patient in a denture try in. So you can see what the the denture is going to look like when it's finished, and the patient and the clinician can see. Uh, the different aspects of the characterization of these, um, these special try-ins uh, in, in the try-in stage. So it's great you know, that the patient can see this. So um, it's, uh, we've come a long way with materials. So 
those are a couple of things we spoke about last time on materials and even new advancements on hybrid dentures and over dentures. You know, there are so many different choices with uh, attachments out there now for over dentures. And, you know, the standard of care, at least for a lower denture, is two, two implants with two attachments on it. And that's been the standard of care for a while now. And we'll talk about that in a, in a, in a few minutes when we get to uh, uh, denture setups also. Uh, but, uh, and hybrid dentures. You know, the materials that are out there for hybrid dentures are amazing now for dentures. So uh, uh, we, we have come a long way in those aspects also. There's milled bars now that look like pieces of jewelry. Look at this, this milled over denture bar uh, with uh, locator attachments. This is a very functional type of a, a, a case that we're going to be doing what we would, would do with this type of, of uh, design. This is your hybrid case, all on four, all on six case type case with dentures and uh, very aesthetic. And we have, to, you know, we, we have. Uh, I just want to bring make a point here. We have many other courses that uh, cover this uh, these aspects of it. I'm just going to show you these cases this morning a little bit, but. We have some great courses that we've been going to be presenting in the future on implant over dentures and hybrid cases and, and implant dentures also. So uh, another type of, this is a, a conversion that was done uh, with a, a hybrid type of uh, denture conversion in, for, in, for, in the office. So with chair side conversions, come a long way with this type of technology also. And new advancements for partial denture materials. You know, we've, we've come a long way for partial denture materials. Many, many patients now are looking towards metal-free materials. That's something that's going to be aesthetic, yet functional. And we have to be careful how we uh, use the applications of this, these materials because they are not for every patient. So you, there's a lot of different considerations you, you have to look at when you're making these types of partials. And you'll see that in the future when I present my partial denture course. But we have types, this, these types of partial dentures. This is a mill-type denture uh, that we use CAD-CAM technology, metal-free. And we're able, it's a lightweight material, but very strong. Uh, and uh, this is called the uh, Salve Altair uh, partial. And another very popular partial is uh, a partial with clear, uh, clear frameworks. So, you know, these virtually dif disappear in the mouth and uh, the aesthetics are amazing with these and the comfort and fit, uh, phenomenal. So uh, these are some options for partial dentures. So we've come a long way, you know, with partial dentures also. So we, the materials that are out there now, I, I just love, you know, so there's a lot of choices. And the main, you know, the, the main object, uh, objective here is to, for patient satisfaction and for patient uh, function and, and aesthetics. So, and that's the basics on new technology with digital dentures. We, you know, come a long way with printed and mill type material, especially with printed material. You know, and, um, you know, stay tuned for this presentation. We're going to be doing, um, you know, getting the edge on removables, which is going to incorporate all the digital technology on, on denture, uh, dentures out there in the market today. So with printed and milled uh, technology, we've, we've, I mean, it's the, the aesthetics are great. The materials are much better. You know, if you asked me about a year ago, two years ago, how about printed dentures, I would say the material wasn't there yet, but we're just about there. We have great materials that we've, uh, uh, we utilize with the DSG, with the dense ply printed and uh, Lucitone mill dentures. So now we can print and mill a beautiful functional and aesthetic denture, you know, and now we have that, that digital record at all times in case the patient, uh, you know, loses that denture or something happens to that denture, we can print and mill a new one in no time. So, uh, and the fit and function are phenomenal with these. So, but you have to remember on these digital and analog, uh, digital dentures, you know, we have to compare it to an analog denture. We need to utilize the same fundamental prosthodontic processes to make a digital denture as we always have. And the clinician still needs to communicate and provide the technician with the necessary information for a functional case. Digital denture technology is still evolving and improving at a rapid pace. And basic knowledge of prosthodontic principles, including providing accurate impressions, is even more important in the digital world because many details can now be seen on a large screen that we couldn't, couldn't see before. And dentists still need to understand the importance of capturing accurate maxillomandibular records by registrations, vertical dimension, and centric relation. So, and us technicians, we need to continue to analyze ridge relationships and then select the appropriate anterior and posterior teeth desired occlusal scheme. So you'll see more of those, uh, more information on this in the future when we do our uh, digital adventure uh, presentation. But now let's go back to uh, our back to basics here on our review. You know, a major aspect of what I talk about in uh, back to basics is communication. You know, case planning and the correct materials and procedures. This is extremely important. Uh, so we, we have that communication line with the doctors at all times, but sometimes we don't have that, uh, you know, that proper communication uh, because things are missed here and there, but we try not to do that. We want to make sure that we're using 
the right types of materials. We're planning these cases correctly and uh, making sure that we uh, overcome the problems that the patient had had in the past. So we have all these communication tools at our fingertips and we, we have to utilize them correctly. And with the dentist, we depend on your knowledge and clinical knowledge and training, the assessment of the patient, appropriate treatment planning, and detailed information on ERX. And I talked about this last time, this is kind of a review of what I talked about uh, in the last presentation. And of course, the correct materials and digital photography. And we try to communicate with you at the laboratory on with our technical expertise and the knowledge and procedures of materials. So the communication back and forth uh, on bites, impressions, and shades is going to make a successful case. Clinical protocol. We'll talk about the clinical protocol. We went over, over some of the clinical, clinical protocol um, in a previous presentation, but now you know we're up to, I think, the fourth visit, the tooth setup and wax try-in. So as a review for the clinical protocol and removable show, the first visit is that preliminary impression, second visit, that custom tray final impression and border molding correctly. And that third visit is that by registration. We want a great occlusal record uh, on that third visit from, uh, from you. And, uh, and we'll get that back in the laboratory and we'll apply that in, in the laboratory to do a functional nice uh, tooth setup and wax trying for the fourth visit. And the fifth visit is a final insertion. And if you note on the bottom here, the screen here, you know, please note that a visit can be eliminated if a functional impression is taken inside the occlusal base plate at the second visit. And we'll show that when we do our denture setups in a little while. So, so best practices for the full dentures, we want a good first preliminary, preliminary impression. Try, try to capture all the anatomical landmarks in these impressions. Border molding is essential. We went over this earlier in our uh, first presentation. Uh, we want to make sure we use a heavy body or monophase material on the borders, put some adhesive on there, insert it in the mouth, get all the impressions of the musculature of the mouth, then use a light body or medium body to take that final impression. We want a nice accurate impression that captures all the anatomical landmarks, as you see here. And bite registrations. We want to, we've talked about functions and requirements of bite registrations. We want to make sure we capture all the information we need uh, so you can so you, so you can uh, transfer it onto the bite rim and bite registration so we can have that in the dental laboratory and put that on an articulator and mimic true jaw function. And you know, on occlusal records, you know, we want to make sure we get you capture the midline, the canine line, put all the information on the occlusal records, the smile line, and the occlusal plane. This is going to help us in the laboratory setting these denture teeth. You know, we have an intraocclusal space of 40 millimeters or more, sometimes a little bit less, and we have to fill that space with denture teeth. And we, if, we, if, in order, you know, when we get the correct information from you, uh, it's like having the patient at the, at the laboratory with us and at the bench. So we want to apply what we get the information from you and we want to apply it to our denture setups. So talked about different types of articulators, so semi-adjustable, fully adjustable. We want to mimic true jaw function when we're seeing our, our denture teeth. And, uh, and we talked about Facebook transfers for a little bit last time also. So I just wanted to review with some of the things we spoke about this way, this way you keep that in mind as we're going forward with our part two of our denture, our denture back to basics and dentures here. So, so let's get started with back to basics and dentures part two. And let's look at your exam checklist here. You know, when you're examining, uh, examining a patient, you have to look at the physiological factors and the anatomical factors, the functional factors and the aesthetic factors. All of these come into play. You know, I, I love going chair side uh, with, with clinicians. So uh, as when they're doing this, so to, to, to assess the patient, you know, we talk about, talked about assessing the patient and seeing what were the factors maybe that they had trouble with the existing dentures. You know, so we look at all these factors and we try to uh, come up with a solution for the patient. It might not be a full upper and full lower denture. It might have to be an implant type denture. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So patient expectations. The dentist should meet the mind of the patient before he or she meets the mouth. So talk to the patient, see what their patient expectations are. Um, see if we can meet those expectations with the right case. So really important. Preclinical interview, hold a preclinical interview, find out what was wrong with the patient, uh, what, why the patient wasn't happy with their existing dentures. What are the specific concerns or limitations? How long have you been a, dent a dentalist? These are some of the questions you should be asking. How many dentures have you had since you have your tooth loss and how did you lose your teeth? And when was the last time your dentures were relined? You know, have you ever considered implants? 
So uh, these are a lot of uh, good questions to ask these patients here uh, when, you, when, you, when you're planning a case or they're having problems in the past with dentures. So um, complete denture checklist, patient complaints, history of dentalism, support, stability, retention. And I, I like to show, uh, put this on there, the floor of the mouth and tongue room in position. And I see a lot of problems with dentures that are not contoured correctly because the, the tongue is, is too large or the tongue expands too much and actually push that, pushes that denture and uh, pushes it outside the mouth and brings that denture out of occlusion. In this case, when you have con consistent problems like this, then you have to consider a uh, possible overdenture with attachments. So uh, uh, some of these uh, existing dentures have these uh, with this checklist, go through this checklist and find out if these complaints are with existing dentures and we have to try to correct that. So again, on the left-hand side here, we have a full upper edentulous ridge and you can see the resorption on the left-hand side, some flabby tissue on the anterior region. So uh, this, this is a case that might be a problem. So uh, we wanna make sure that a correct impression is taken and we capture all those anatomical landmarks and the denture fit and function is correct. But look at the right-hand side with this patient here. You know, it's a large tongue and I can see making a lower denture with this patient is gonna, might be a problem with the patient uh, just pr uh, protruding that tongue and pushing that denture out of the mouth here. So uh, we wanna make sure we'll try special contours with concavity on the acrylic so the, the tongue can actually aid in retention in this particular um, case here. So we wanna make sure it's contoured correctly. If we don't have a proper, proper contour, then we have to consider an implant over denture. We have our checklist continued. You know, how are the border extensions on the uh, previous denture? You know, I see many times that the borders are cut too short. You know, you, know, you take the time to do uh, a proper border molding and then, you, when, and then the laboratory may cut the border extensions too short or uh, they're, they're, we didn't capture enough of those border extension and impression. We have to look at the centric relation of the uh, patients, the BDO. Uh, we have to look at the occlusion. Uh, we have to look at the type of occlusion. You know, maybe the patient has a full upper and full lower denture, maybe they're better off with lingualized occlusion, you know, where that lingual cusp is going into the central possible lower and relieving and having the off-axis stress on the ridge and the patient is able to chew and bite correctly. We have to, you know, with their phonetic problems, we have to look at the opposing dentition also. So uh, this is a complete denture checklist where we, we really have to look at these, uh, this checklist when we're planning a, full, a successful full upper and full lower denture. So let, let's talk about the fourth visit here. And this, you know, we left off with the third visit on our previous presentation uh, on back to basics. And now we're ready for a tooth setup and wax trying. So these are some of the wax trying setups that I've done in the past. And we're gonna talk about proper placement of denture teeth. So it's time to do a few setups here. So, you know, I'm gonna talk about the laboratory procedure a little bit here. I think it's important to see what we go through in the laboratory so we can uh, both, we can get together with communication and, uh, and come up with a successful full upper and full lower denture. So first thing we have to look at is using the correct denture teeth. You know, using the correct denture teeth is very important. You know, as I'm, I'm presenting around the country to different uh, clinicians and study groups, I always bring this up. I, I, I say, how many people here know about the, the vari vari variations in denture teeth on the market? And not too many people know that, you know, there's so many denture tooth companies out there and uh, some teeth are inferior, some, some some teeth are superior, uh, and you want to use a denture tooth that's going to wear well and have natural function, uh, natural morphology, tooth morphology, and something that's going to wear like almost like natural dentition. So uh, there's a lot of dent denture teeth out there. I like the Vita. Uh, we have, um, you know, Densply has some good teeth here. I like Ivoclar also. Piraeus Culture has some great teeth. So, um, and, you know, Mondial has great fit and function, and, uh, and, and it's, it's aesthetic looking. So let's talk about what we look, need to look for when we're looking for at denture teeth. So we try to get this, it's the same size as natural teeth. You know, I see a lot, especially with partial dentures, I see posterior teeth that are too small compared to the natural teeth that the patient has. So you wanna get, a, we wanna pick a tooth that's gonna be the same size as natural teeth and have high wear resistance. I like lingual anatomy on the anterior region of, of the teeth on a lingual of the anterior teeth for better phonetics. You know, many new patient, new denture uh, patient, uh, uh, when they have, they have trouble with veneers. So the patient gets a new denture and they're wearing that new denture and their tongue tends to slide off the palatal area of the denture. And uh, so I like a denture tooth with lingual anatomy to help with phonetics. And this shading system also, you know, um, 
we mainly use Vita 3D shades or uh, Vita Classic shades for dentures. We also have Vita 3D shades. So we're doing, we're doing a combination case with a crown of bridge case, for instance. If we're doing uh, a case like from six to 11 with an anterior bridge, we want something that's gonna match perfectly. And if that's a 3D shaded uh, bridge, we can match that with Vita Classic, uh, Vita 3D shaded denture teeth. So. So I mentioned earlier about the lingual anatomy and this would look at the natural rugae here on the mouth here. So in, in, on the palatal area, and you can see when the tongue slides along the lingual here, it's gonna feel natural for the patient. And I go as far as even to mimic the natural rugae of the patient and make a wax pattern and place it in that denture so the patient can, can feel natural. And uh, the combination of those anterior teeth uh, with the uh, lingual anatomy and the rugae it really works out well with phonetics. So, but I would say about 60% <clears throat> of the time we're getting requests for rugae in a palate. Most of the time, with uh, the other 40%, we're, we're doing smooth palates. So, denture tooth cri cri criteria. So, you know, we really want a, um, a posterior tooth that's going to have a cuspal inclination of about 20 to 33 degrees. So, I say this because we were meant to chew and tear our food. If we're going down to like a five degree or zero degree tooth, we're chewing like a cow. We're sliding across our teeth and we're not chewing and tearing that food correctly. So I like anywhere from 20 to 33 degree cuspal inclination. A 15 degree tooth is great. That on, on an average with a, um, a lingualized occlusion tooth, it's about a 15 degree uh, cuspal inclination. We want something with better tearing and chewing capabilities uh, and a wider occlusal plane, like I mentioned before, for partial dentures. Emergence profiles, we're gonna look at emergence profiles for different patients. We want something that's gonna look natural and aesthetic. You know, patients don't wanna look like they're, having de they're wearing dentures. They don't wanna look like they're wearing something like their grandfather had or their grandmother had. It's something now that we wanna to present to the patient that is gonna be a, um, a cosmetic type denture that's gonna be highly aesthetic and highly functional. But how did we sell, select anterior teeth? You know, so we're getting ready to do our setups and how did we select anterior teeth? You know, many times we get our anterior molds uh, from, the, from the dental office, uh, but the majority of the time, I think we're, we're, we're picking out our teeth uh, uh, in the laboratory. So we have to look at the different aspects of pick, picking out uh, and selecting anterior teeth. So we can determine the mold. And this is what I've done over the years. You know, I look at the shape of the upper arch, look at that upper arch here in the picture. And it actually looks like a central, right? You know, the cervical area is on top here, and uh, you know, and, and as you go to the incisal edge, that's where the hamula notch is. So all these years, when I was picking out teeth, I would look at the upper arch or the upper model that I would I would get, and I would correspond it with the, uh, a square tapering, a square mold, a tapering ovoid. Uh, there were so many different molds to choose from, but I would go by the shape of the arch, and it really worked out well for me over the years looking at the shape of the arch when I'm, I was picking out these denture teeth. You can also determine the upper anterior mold by the width of the six interiors by measuring cuspid to cuspid uh, on the lines that you provided on the occlusal rim. So I, I'll take a millimeter ruler and go from cuspid to cuspid uh, and I would measure that. For instance, it would be like 40, maybe 48 millimeters or 50 millimeters and from cuspid to cuspid. And I would go to my tooth chart and every tooth manufacturer usually has a tooth chart, a tooth chart where you can go and look at the corresponding measurements and I'll recommend an anterior tooth and also recommend posterior teeth. Tooth form usually equals facial form. Just like that palate, that palate I, I showed you before, that shape of the palate is equal to the shape of the, uh, the central. Tooth form equals facial form. You have a square face, you'll have a square central. Square ovoid face, um, we'll have a square ovoid type of uh, uh, tooth and so on. So uh, tooth form usually does equal facial form. And these are all slides, but I, I like to use them as a reference because uh, some of them are Vita slides, some of them from, from Densply. But um, you can see square face, square tooth, and so on. You know? so, uh, so we have a lot of um, natural anatomical landmarks we can go by also by picking out denture teeth. So look at the sagittal and frontal considerations. You know, usually the tips of the canines are equal to the width of the nose, and the width of the centrals are equal to the width of the philtrum. So there's some more natural anatomical landmarks. So, and there's a lot of two different tools we can utilize. Uh, we have an alameter, we have a papillometer, and I don't have time to get into all those things today, but uh, these are all other tools that uh, we can utilize. And you'll see those, uh, those um, um, more information on those in my other uh, uh, presentations. And we have some short videos on those also. But let's look at the facial features also. You know, I'd like to do a cross section of the face here just to show what we need 
you know, it's great when we, we get a, um, a digital photo of the patient when we're, we're making our, our dentures. And, you know, I'm splitting the face in half here. So just to show that the width of the nose is equal to the width uh, the, from cuspid to cuspid. You know, and we have the midline, we have the high smile line, and, you know, everything we need for, to set up our denture teeth correctly in a laboratory. So let's get started with setting denture teeth. I have my own method of setting denture teeth, and, um, you know, I, we still got a lot of prosthodontists who set their own teeth and send it to us to process the case. But um, this is what's been successful for, for me over the years, and I've, I really uh, have to say it's been a, a, a blessing doing things this way because it eliminated a lot of resets and a lot of remakes. So, uh, but we want to set denture teeth to replicate nature. We want a harmonious and aesthetic setup. I kid around with uh, different technicians as, as I do training. Many times they'll, they'll set that denture teeth perfectly straight and they'll, they'll finish that denture with just a, a smooth uh, acrylic uh, base. So I always call that the pink smoothie. I try not to have, get a pink smoothie in a denture. I want something that's going to look, look um, aesthetic and functional when we're making a, a full upper denture, a full lower denture. So look at all the anatomical landmarks we have from the dentalist jaw. You know, so we have the maxillary arch and the mandibular arch. You know, some of the things we have to look uh, for, towards when we're making these, uh, this doing a, a successful denture, denture setup is the incisal papilla. You know, that's probably one of the most important areas, I think, when I'm setting my anterior teeth. So on an average, I'm coming out about eight to 10 millimeters from the papilla. And that's, what's, that's on an average of uh, you know, the natural, natural mouth. So, uh, and we have to look at the, uh, you know, the ridge, the crest of the ridge, or the alveolar ridge, the hamula notches. Um, those hamula notches are really important to capture those in, in an impression because we're gonna be putting a post dam area in, 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 uh, in that area when we're making our final denture to create suction. Uh, on a lower, we have to make sure we have a proper impression of the, of the myelohyalar ridge. Um, we want, we're setting our denture teeth on the crest of the ridge on the lower, so we don't, we don't deviate from that crest of the ridge, so we have, some, we have more stable, uh, stable denture. But look at all these this, different anatomical landmarks that we have to go by, you know, and even with the mucobuccal fold, the periphery, really important for, uh, for, for, uh, for denture to stay in and have that retention and capture those anatomical landmarks in full rolls in the impression. So it's gonna, it's gonna wind up being a successful case if you capture all these uh, anatomical landmarks. So setting up the anteriors, aesthetics and phonetics, let's, and we have to keep in mind aesthetics and phonetics on these uh, anterior setups here. So the anteriors are positioned individually and parallel to the pupil line. And the lower incisal edges are parallel to the upper incisal edges. So in, in other words, I'm setting my anterior teeth. I want to use the guidelines of the uppers to set my lower anterior teeth. We want to make sure the occlusal plane is correct. And many times you'll give that information to us on the occlusal rim. And we count on that information from you to set up these teeth correctly. And when I'm teaching denture setups, I always have the, the uh, students or uh, the, uh, the attendees mark the crest of the ridge, put a circle around the uh, retromolar pads because we're coming about two thirds of the retromolar pad uh, when we're setting our second molar. Uh, and we don't want to deviate from the crest of the ridge when we're setting our posterior teeth. We don't want, an we don't want an unstable denture. Anatomical landmarks on the upper, you know, we looked at the papilla, the hamula notch, there's your post anterior and the post posterior region, the fovea palatina. Uh, so all these are really important uh, to look at and analyze when we're setting our denture teeth. So let's, let's look at the case uh, here that which we didn't really get any information from the clinician on where to place these uh, anterior teeth. So we're gonna go on an average on setting these denture teeth now. So we have 40 millimeters of intraocclusal space here and uh, we're gonna be setting our anterior teeth about eight millimeters from the papilla. So first thing I'm doing, I'm putting a little sticky wax on my base plate here, and these are light cured base plates that mimic the natural uh, fit of the final denture. And if you look at figure 17, like the minimum, minimal uh, ridge resorption here, that on this particular type of ridge, I would probably come out about eight to 10 millimeters from the papilla and set my denture teeth. When we have maximum ridge resorption and on the photo on the lower, I'm probably gonna to have to come out a little bit more. So uh, otherwise, you know, I see all the time technicians setting against teeth against the ridge. And if we did this on a maximum ridge resorption case, the patient's lip is gonna be sunken in and it's not going to look, uh, it's not gonna look natural. So real important for uh, us to set those in the correct position. So when to place our upper central, and as you see here, I'm gonna come about 22 millimeters from periphery. 
And that's on an average what, how we're making our bite room and where we're going to be at that, where that incisal edge is going to wind up. So on the right hand side, you'll see something called an alma gauge. And there's a pin that goes into the, the papilla area. And I put that pin in the papilla and I'm coming out around eight to 10 millimeters from the papilla, papilla to set my anterior teeth here. And so I'm going to set my centrals, place the centrals at the correct inclination. I place my laterals at the correct inclination. And then I'll take an occlusal plate. And this is a great method I utilize. And you know, there are templates out there, 20 degree templates, 30 degree templates, zero degree. Um, I like using this occlusal plate. So what I wanna do is someone, I almost acts like a mirror. You can see the reflection of these denture teeth on the occlusal plate. So what I wanna do is have contact with the centrals and the cuspids on the occlusal plate. And that lateral is gonna come off about one millimeter off the occlusal plate. And I'll explain why we're gonna do this in a little while. So. The result, I really want to have a one millimeter overjet and overbite on even between my upper and anterior, upper anterior and lower anterior teeth. So after I set my anterior teeth, I want to check for symmetrical arrangement of the anteriors. At this point, we can, it can be altered for a more bolder arrangement, a more, more softer arrangement. Uh, and uh, everything is in wax now, so you can still adjust it. So again, with our centrals and our canines are on the occlusal plate, and that lateral is about one millimeter off that occlusal plate. So. Now we're going to set our lowers, allowing about one millimeter of vertical and horizontal overlap, keeping in mind inclination. So uh, really important to do this correctly. Um, I'm going to show some slides in a little while with physiological centric relation. Uh, and that's kind of, with uh, physiological centric relation, this contact in all the teeth, uh, really, really hard contact between the anteriors and the posteriors. A lot of denture patients can't tolerate that. So I've been most successful by allowing one millimeter of vertical and horizontal overlap uh, over the years. It really helps the patient function in the correct way. So, so looking for the sagittal view, I look at the incisal urge, uh, a third of the central, and it should be in line with the mucal buccal fold here. So then I place my lateral and cuspids following the guidelines of the upper denture. So I, I mentioned earlier in the presentation about a functional impression inside a bite when you're taking the occlusal records. And uh, we get this a lot, you know, and uh, it, this border molding and impression taking inside the, the, um, the tray that the bite room was made on. So, uh, and so the doctor is taking a nice fun functional impression, giving us all the information we need on the, on the bite registration also in the occlusal rim. As you can see here, we got the high lip line, we have the, the midline and cuspid line. So, but the problem is I have to make a new base plate, a new base plate on this because we poured a new model and the existing base plate is not going to fit correctly. So, but I want to maintain and capture all the information that the doctor gave me on that bike room. So I made a little putty index here and uh, I'm going to make a new base plate and I know exactly where that incisal edge is going to end up. And, uh, and I'm going to set those denture teeth right to that putty in the index here. So there's the putty index. So the information we get uh, from the clinician. We make our new base plate and then we set our denture teeth. So, uh, so we have those, those exact records that we got on that functional impression and that bite registration that we're, we're transferring over to, it over to the setup here. I do the same thing here. I set my anterior teeth and I'll set my lower teeth to correspond with the upper teeth and follow the guidelines of the upper here. So as you can see here. So now we set our upper anterior teeth and uh, we're ready to set our posterior teeth. So we have to look at the type of occlusal scheme. You know, if you remember those, those slides previously, I showed you in the earlier in the presentation, but analyzing the patient and looking at what, what problems the patient may have had in the past, maybe with occlusion, uh, with aesthetics and function and speaking, uh, you know, all uh, phonetics, all those things you have to take into consideration when you're making a new, dent new denture. You know, maybe the, the patient loved their old denture and they want to mimic that uh, you know, in, a, in a new denture. We can do that also. You know, so, but when we're setting our, and selecting our posterior teeth, we want to look at the type of occlusal scheme determine the degree of the tooth, and or we can follow the mold chart also. So um, most of the time I'm using semi-anatomical and anatomical teeth. We'd love to get a class one bite at all times, but you know, make it easier for us, but sometimes we're getting a class two bite. Uh, we have to look at our arrangement a little bit differently, maybe use a little bit less degree of uh, tooth on the posterior. And when we get a class three uh, bite here, a lot many times, this is when I would go through a five degree tooth uh, I try not to go to a zero degree tooth. I, 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 I notice when I'm doing class three setup uh, that if I go to a lesser degree tooth, the patient is able to function a little bit better. So these are some of the different uh, occlusal schemes with dentures. You have your monoplane, like I mentioned earlier, which is a zero degree tooth. 
lingual contact or lingualized occlusion. And most of the time when I'm using lingualized occlusion, which I mentioned earlier, even that lingual cusp of the upper is going into the central fossa of the lower, uh, it's for, it fits for implant cases because it relieves any off-axis stress on the implant. And that off-axis stress on the implant can uh, cause implant failure. So then we have combinations, semi-anatomical and anatomical. Most of the time we're using anatomical and semi-anatomical teeth. Typically, the smaller the ridge, the less degree of tooth, and the greater the ridge, the greater the degree of tooth. So this is not in all cases. You know, so I always talk about making my mother-in-law's denture years ago when she had a flat ridge on, on a lower. And what I did, you know, I tried to give her a lower degree of tooth, like a five degree tooth, and she couldn't function. So finally, I, I spoke to the clinician, her dentist, and I said, you know, let's, let's try a denture with something that's going to be a little more higher cuspal inclination. So I went to the extremes. I gave her a 33-degree cuspal inclination tooth. It was a physiodense tooth from, uh, from uh, Vita. And she was able to chew and eat fantastically. She, she did a great job eating and, and chewing. And she finally, we finally came up, up across a successful denture for her, even though she had a, a flat ridge. So... It doesn't apply all the time, but typically the smaller the ridge, less degree, less degree of the tooth. So setting our posterior teeth. So I mentioned earlier before when I'm teaching setting teeth or, or, or occlusion, and this is very important to know, not only for dental technicians, but for, uh, for clinicians also. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, we're staying on the crest of the ridge when we're setting these lower, lower posterior teeth. We want to align the occlusal surfaces towards the center of the cranium. And the only time I don't align the occlusal surfaces or the center of the cranium, which in essence is a curve of Wilson, is when I'm setting my lingualized occlusion. I'll still have my curve of speed from the anterior to the posterior, that natural curve, but I won't have that curve of Wilson. So, uh, and the reason being, I want those stresses to come right down on the, on the ridge or the implant. So the actual inclination of the posterior is the center of the cranium, like I just showed. And we want to check our, our checklist here for setting posterior teeth. We want to make sure the central fossa of the teeth are on a lower ridge, on right on the cent, you know, right on the center of the ridge. Uh, check our vertical inclination of the posterior. Check our curve of speed, curve of Wilson. As a review, let's look at this. This is our curve of Wilson from buccal to lingual, and then we have our curve of speed from anterior to posterior. And there are uh, occlusal plates that you can utilize to achieve these curve of speed and curve of Wilson very easily when you're setting your denture teeth. All right, so now we're ready to set up posterior teeth. I'm still using an occlusal plate. So the first thing I'll do, I'll set my first uh, bicuspid. I'll have contact on the occlusal plate. I'll set my lower first bicuspid. I'll make sure it interdigitates correctly. Then if you see on the lower part of the, uh, the screen here, I'll set my second uh, bicuspid on the occlusal plate with contact. And then I'll set my, uh, my lower teeth to interdigitate, interdigitate with that. Now we're ready to set our first molar. So I'll have the mesial cusp of the molar touching that uh, occlusal plate and the distal cusp is going to be off the plate. And when I set my second molar, as you'll see on the, uh, on the lower half of the screen here, I don't have any contact at all. And what did I do just then? I just, I just created a nice curve of speed. So all I'm gonna do now is have set my lower denture teeth to correspond and interdigitate with the uh, upper teeth. I have a, a occlusal plate. I wanna make sure the height of the, con the height of contour of these posterior teeth are nice and even. And we have a nice functional setup here. I set the rest of my posterior teeth and I can adjust, adjust my working and balancing and my contact points. And this is one of the tools I use. I use, it's called an OMP uh, template. I want to align the buccal ridges of the molars and premolars correctly when they're setting the denture teeth. And this ha helps uh, eliminate uh, cheek biting also. So I want to make sure those are in the, in the right position to eliminate cheek biting too. So everything's set up now. We have full upper, full lower denture set up. And now we're going to wax it up for a try-in. And this is a final try-in, wax up try-in. So beautiful uh, upper and lower denture ready to be tried in. Good denture teeth. Nice, nice occlusion, checked our working and balancing, and we're ready to try and to have set this up, send this to the uh, office to, for you to try it in. So we had a nice harmonious transition to the posterior teeth from the anterior teeth, a completed an individual anterior setup. Posteriors were harmonious inclinations towards, towards, towards the anterior. Now, this is real, I'm just gonna go over this real quick. There's another uh, setup technique that you can utilize. I mentioned earlier with a template and on this particular case here, I, it was an Artex articulator. I did pretty much what I did earlier, but instead of using that occlusal plate, 
I, I used a template. And instead of, instead of setting my upper anterior, uh, posterior teeth and then my lower posterior teeth, I set all my lower posterior teeth first. And I'll show you how we did this. And this made it pretty easily and it, easy to set these teeth up. And one of the things that, um, why I came about this technique is uh, one of the laboratories I used to work in, this was down south in North Carolina, we had about 45 denture technicians in our laboratory. And the, the owner asked me to have a little higher production with our setups maintain, and maintain quality at the same time. So we came up with this method here. So we had 40 millimeters of intraocclusal space. We set up our upper interiors. We checked our arrangement on the, on the occlusal plate here, like we said earlier. Then we set our lower interiors to correspond with the upper interiors. Now we have this Artex articulator and I put this uh, template on and I'm gonna be setting <clears throat> my posterior teeth on a lower right to that template. And now I'm gonna achieve my curve of Wilson and my curve of speed. And this is a template, it's 25 to 33 degree uh, cuspal inclination. So I set all my posterior teeth against that template. <clears throat> and then if I check everything, I check the lingual view, make sure there's contact. And then I have my Curvis B and Curvis Wilson that are verified. And then all I'll do is set my upper, upper posterior teeth. So I actually cut my setup time by about 10 to 15 minutes using this template. So it was pretty cool. And the results were phenomenal. So we utilize this a lot also in the laboratories, this technique. And there's a final wax up uh, for setup for trying. So as you can see, a nice characterized wax up and a functional setup. Then we try to come across with a nice uh, setup so the patient can see what that denture is gonna look like when it's finished. So I use aesthetically colored waxers to, to mimic natural gingiva. I shaped the base to look like uh, the natural gingiva in, in the mouth also, and I apply different colors. So, and which, which, which one would you prefer, the left one or the right one? I think you would prefer the right one. So uh, with the characterized wax up. So here's the final setup. And uh, you know, so we'll send this back to you and we're gonna look at some of the checkpoints where, you, where you're gonna look at and um, uh, establish when you, you have the patient in the chair to make sure that denture trying is correct. And then we'll go to a finish if everything's correct. So, and there's your final wax for trying. So on the final denture wax trying, you wanna look for the aesthetics, wanna make sure the midline is correct, your occlusal plane is correct, your centric relation is correct and occlusion phonetics. And if it's not correct, take, vote, take photos or even a capture uh, of short video. Uh, many times I'll get a short video from the clinician uh, to show where the excursions are, the patient going into different lateral excursions and if there's interference with the bite. So. So make sure you look at this checklist and go through this with uh, your wax trying because I have been in dental offices where the, I've seen the clinician put the denture in the mouth, tell the patient to bite down. Okay, it looks good. Take it out of the mouth. You know, it's too quick. You want to take your time. You're going to alleviate a lot of headaches later on if you do these uh, things correctly with these checklists I showed in this presentation. So aesthetics, midline, occlusal plane, centric relation, occlusion, uh, phonetics, and take a photo if necessary. And then our final visit is going to be a final insertion. We, we, you know, if, uh, we, if everything looked good in the, in the try-in, uh, final insertion is going to, you're going to check fit, form, and function. Sometimes there's some pressure spots you would have to, have to adjust. And we pretty much equilibrate that occlusion in the laboratory because you put that upper and lower finish back on an articulator if it's processed. But sometimes you might have to do some adjustments also. So you might have to equilibrate that occlusion a little bit uh, in the office. So. <clears throat> But when we're processing dent these dentures, we wanna make sure we're utilizing the right material. So there's a lot of inferior acrylics out there that are brittle. There's a high monomer content in them. The patient gets reaction. So we wanna make sure they're done correctly. And the most accurate way to process a denture is through injection. So, uh, and press pack denture, denture technique processing is still utilized, but the most accurate is, uh, is with uh, injection. This is good conventional investing in packing and processing of a denture. I think still used about 60% of the time around, around, uh, around the, the industry. But I like the injection method because we, uh, you, you have constant pressure against the model at all times while that, while that acrylic is being polymerized. So, uh, and then you have less shrinkage factor. So in denture basis, what are we looking for? We want a natural look, a lower shrinkage factor, a variety of gingival shades. We want something that's gonna have a great bond to denture teeth. I mentioned earlier about inferior acrylics out there. Sometimes you don't have that great bond to the denture teeth, especially with the uh, advanced denture teeth that we have today. These are hardened acrylic denture teeth. Uh, PMMA uh, uh, acrylic, 
Uh, we have um, composite teeth. So we want to make sure there's a great bond to that denture base. And uh, we wanna, we, uh, there's, there are denture acrylics with, which can achieve that. So we want good finishing and polishing properties. And we want color fit and stability. So uh, really important uh, uh, that we're looking for in a denture base. So these are some of the dentures I made with uh, Diamond D acrylic, which is a you know, really great uh, high impact uh, flexural with high flexural strength acrylic that uh, we utilize with implant cases and with uh, full dentures. So you have a variety of shades here uh, to choose from uh, to match the natural ginger with the patient. And if we can't match the natural ginger with the, ginger with the patient, then we can utilize uh, a denture based stain technique to match that. And this is an example right here. So if you send a photo of the patient's natural gingiva, we can match that gingiva with these special kits that we have in the laboratory. And these are full upper, full lower, uh, uh, characterized finished here. And so uh, with physiodense den denture teeth. And I showed this earlier uh, in, the, uh, in the presentation also. There's a picture of it in the mouth. Uh, we didn't get a picture with the patient really smiling so we could see that gingiva, but look how natural that denture looks. Beautiful full upper and full lower denture, a natural looking teeth. You never think the patient had a denture. And there's a lower denture here. As you can see that we, we contoured this, uh, the lingual of this denture uh, uh, to conform with the, the patient's tongue. So we'll have good retention and that patient will, won't trip that denture or kick that denture out of the mouth with their tongue. So we're gonna end this uh, presentation now. Artistry through denture technology, there's a lot of options we have, but if you follow the basics and follow the, the, uh, the guidelines, like I showed you here, you'll have a successful denture. And the communication is key when you're talking with us at the laboratory to plan these cases. And we'll work closely with you because the ultimate goal is patient satisfaction and let us, less headaches and less care time for you in the operatory. So with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. We're going to take some questions if you have it, but thank you for joining us and uh, thank you for allowing us to be part of your morning.